Hello, everyone. Welcome to Development Palettes. I'm Aaron Loomis coming to you from the Ventura Cigar Company studio. With me today is June Lou, Seth Geis, and John McTavish. How are you guys doing this afternoon? Get some. Rolling. So today we are talking about the Diesel Whiskey Row Sherry Cask Robusto. Uh, cigar is 5 inch by 52 ring gauge. Comes out of the Tabacalera AJ Fernandez factory in Nicaragua. Uh, wrapper is Connecticut Broadleaf. Binder is Brazilian Araparaca. Uh, filler is Nicaraguan Habano, blended by AJ Fernandez. Price point is eight dollars and forty nine cents, and the cigar was released in June of twenty nineteen. So, how, June, how about you tell us about your overall thoughts on this cigar? Uh, even though we don't score on pre light, I think this is how this is a perfect example of the pre light experience that one should have from some like from some of the tobaccos being in certain casts that's being aged, right? So. Specifically within the sherry cast, I got aged. I'm not sure how long the aging was, but I guess it doesn't really matter because it was a really good pre-light. Um, you know, the, there was so much of this, like, like uh, ripe stone fruit uh, notes, uh, like really jammed fruitiness, uh, like a mulled wine kind of a thing going on um, that sherry cast should develop, should, should provide. So... I thought the pre-light was absolutely amazing. Uh, so that got me, you know, pretty amped to smoke the cigar. Uh, but in terms of the smoking experience, I don't know, man. I, I don't know if I had a cigar in such a while that it started out promising and just absolutely into the shit. So, um, you know, the first third was really good, actually. I had this, like, overall I had this, like, effervescent mouthfeel to it. It's like an oily mouthfeel. Um, had, like, really good sweet cherries. Had this, like... And to fortify wine to it, uh, mineral, cedar, bread. But as the cigar went through, all those complexities just started getting uh, plugged out left and right. Um, and ultimately, you know, ended up with just being this like metallic cedar kind of a thing going through. And it was just not pleasant. Um, what I can say is with confidence is this is a great burning and draw because it's from AJ. Um, but overall, I mean, uh, I'm let down by it. I mean, I don't really know. I, I, I guess with every cigar that's out there that's kind of had this kind of style of tobacco being aged um, in different casts, I asked for a better smoking experience. Um, so far, every single one has been a miss, uh, and this is no different. All right, Seth, how about you? What are your overall thoughts on the cigar? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I'll, let me, I'm going to piggyback off of June saying it, for me, the pre light experience and just overall appearance is, is awesome. I think it looks great gritty firm texture really great maduro um awesome aromas um i i enjoyed the first third um you know i was i was getting some strong oak rich earth chocolate tobacco notes um there's some sweet spices and strong spices it was really good and then i mean i thought the second third held up but then it did kind of go downhill in the final third for me um i think my mine went downhill later than yours if that makes any sense um but overall, I, I mean, it's, I enjoyed it. Um, you know, in some ways, I, I think it reminded me of, I think, what I always thought Diesel has been and what should be about. Like, you know, I remember smoking the Unholy Cocktails when they first came out um, and just how rich and dark they were. And I know that's a CI, a Cigar Meyer, and Dutch exclusive, and these are national, but it kind of brought me back to that. And I kind of dug the, the oak and the sherry qualities with that experience, man. All right, John, how about you? It's funny everybody's talking about the pre-light because I actually made a point of saying, you know, this is this is an interesting presentation and I wish more manufacturers would take the time to focus on the presentation because I rated the presentation is very good and I don't know the last time I've done that. The band was interesting. The foot band was a nice touch. The aroma was nice. The construction was good. Um, is if I saw this cigar on a shelf and knew nothing about it, I'd want to pick this cigar up because everything about it visually was appealing. As far as the smoking experience goes, well, <clears throat> I mean, it had whiskey in the name, so it had that going for it. Um, is it, I've never, it's been a while since I've been this set up and this let down on a cigar experience. Because when you say Pedro Jimenez, Pedro Jimenez is one of the most intense sherry casks out there. And I got exactly none of that through the smoking experience. And I'm not sure if that's just because the fillers or the wrappers or whatever they put in the barrel didn't spend enough time in there or what. 
Maybe it was a third fill, maybe it was a fifth fill, maybe there was nothing left in the cask. I don't know, but I did not get any of that in the smoking experience. And the blend for me was pretty average. It wasn't bad, it just was pretty average. So there's nothing about the blend that made it stand on its own. There's no components from the Pedro Menes that helped it stand on its own. So ultimately, it was a pretty average experience. But as, as June said... Nobody better accuse AJ of making a bad cigar because the construction and the burn and this is flawless. And I feel like that is a phrase that I keep repeating over and over and over again while having average experiences with AJ sticks. And it's it's getting a little tiring, I'll be honest with you. Aaron, what was your experience like? Yeah, for me, the flavor profile was pretty linear. It just like charred oak, light green, that kind of transitioned over to mustiness. Uh, that char kind of increased as the scar went along. Some bitterness joined in during the final third. Um if you're talking about barrel influence, one thing I can imagine coming from this barrel was the oak notes because um, yeah. it was just all oak. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I think this is definitely a lesser cigar than the original Whiskey Row. Um, you know, as disappointed as I was with that cigar, this is worse than that. Um, and it, in my opinion, barrel aging needs to bring a unique aspect to the tobacco and the smoking experience. Not accomplished here. Um, and I will say, I don't think I've really been impressed with anybody doing it. Um, but if you I, say that you're going to do this, do it. Um, give us more. To, to your point and uh, June's point about uh, barrel aging, there is actually a company that did it, that both of you enjoyed their cigar. They just didn't actually talk about it. It was actually um, kind of kept on the DL. And we can talk about it offline, but it's interesting that one of the one of the cigars that landed in our top twenty-five quite high had barrel-aged tobacco in it. They didn't talk about it. They didn't okay. showcase oh, it. They didn't in any way advertise it. Can we and, say it? Go for it. Santa Fe. Nope. <laughs> oh. <laughs> can we say it? Uh, <laughs> no, we cannot say it. Camel Crush. Nope. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, I pass. Go so I, I just I, doing I, barrel stuff I find I find it fascinating. Yeah, there's like. Bunch of companies are doing barrel age, and some of the companies are doing barrel age, keeping it on the DL and doing a really good job of it. And they don't need to put it all over the packaging. So, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna make this big deal out of, you know, it's age in this cask, it's age in this cast, boy, you better taste that. Yeah, I mean, if the other one was, and I didn't know it, and maybe it enhanced the flavor profile. So maybe I am impressed with somebody. But uh, everybody that's uh, you know touted it, I haven't I haven't been thrilled with it. I mean, it's I just. It's just... <clears throat> no, I'm sorry, I interrupted. Yeah, I just think it's too subtle. I mean, and I know that they want they don't want to overpower it and they don't want to make it think people think it's an infused cigar, but damn it, if you're gonna say there's beer in it or there's whiskey in it or there's whatever in it, I wanna know what's in there. Um otherwise it just doesn't do it for me. So it's pretty it's pretty um, cheap. Eight fifty, you guys, for for PX Sherry cast especially, right? That makes spending me extra think time. Like fourth or fifth fill. Well, probably. Yeah, who knows what it is. I mean, yeah. they're probably, uh, they're probably really, I mean, they're probably, there's probably too much. There's probably a lot of tobacco on the cask and there's probably not, they're not leaving in there for a long period of time. Yeah. And it's one of these things because they're probably too afraid to have people be like, oh, this is infused. Yeah. There's probably this hesitation that they're, they don't want to rock the boat on that. I mean, I, I'll say the um, Camacho Nicaraguan barrel aged was it was very prominent in there you could get that yep. rum um and i don't know how long they've been putting them in the barrels and so forth um but it was very prominent with that and it was good yeah it wasn't bad yeah so uh we don't i don't really think we need to be secretive about it seth you said it was the single decadas yeah 100 percent. Yeah. okay yeah, then, yeah. Fantastic, barrel job, barrel aged tobacco. fantastic job with barrel aging then. And I could I could taste Wait. it immediately. You could smell it. You Did could you taste quattro, it. Quattro Cinco too. Wasn't quattro it? Cinco too. But the Quattro Cinco, they made it public. Oh, the Hoya? Cin- yep. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> the Cinco de Cotis, they didn't make any mention of it whatsoever. And when I brought it up, it just all I got was a smile. And I love that because that's when I know I've hit the nail on the head. Dude, but I mean, are, you could smell it and taste yeah. it immediately. Those are good. Yeah. 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 The same it's, Pedro barrel age. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm trying to it's, it's, Cuban, it's Cuban filler. Yeah. You should, you're just going to go down my list, say all the top five cigars from yeah. every year's barrel aged cigars. Right? I think barrel-aged. it was actually yeah. Kiko Man. Kiko Man. Kiko Man. Kiko Man soy sauce. I wouldn't mind soy some, salt, some soy, soy sauce saltiness. <laughs> I'd smoke that. Yeah, I would definitely smoke <laughs> Whatever. that. Whatever. Hey, make I'm it, sure. make it happen. Do it. June, let's, June, we got you on board, man. Let's do it. Let's do a soy sauce yeah. infused cigar. Fuck it. 
DP soy. That's right. Do, do one of those um, chicken, uh, chicken, whatever packets. That'd be yummy. Yeah, yeah. that'd be good. Yeah. All right, let's get into the scores. We'll start at the top with Seth at 6.82. Uh, yeah, June, boy. Was, June was next at 5.75. John third at 5.40. I give it a 5.15. Damn, 5. you. So, Damn uh, you. Seth, six, I'm back, baby. All right, Seth, <laughs> 6.82. Dude, Justin's such a good guy. So he's great. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, this, I thought we were talking about Justin. That, Justin's one of the uh, one of the best brand owners for General Cigar. No, I mean, Fantastic listen, I, I enjoyed it. I, it's it, to me, it kind of, and this is, I mean, guys, I've been smoking. I, I mean, I don't know, maybe maybe you guys have too, but I've been smoking like diesels back when they were like diesels. I love uh, the old diesels, man. Yeah, man. So uh, it's like the unholy cocktail when yeah. it was just that bellicoso to me it's almost like i'm not saying it tastes anything like the unholy cocktail but i feel like it's kind of like the direction they were going with it um it kind of just kind of brings me back to that with like that broadleaf and and the, the brazilian and just the nicaraguan tobacco um so i enjoyed it um i mean i i think they'll age better i think they do need to, to age a little bit longer um but i, I listen i enjoyed stick all right, June's 5.75. Um, started out good, went to average, went to subpar for smoking experience, perfect construction. So, you know, I, I, I might want to rethink our burn and draw scores because I feel yeah, like – Too much? Yeah, it just sounds high. You know what I mean? Sometimes I feel like it sounds like perhaps it's not a true indicative of uh, – indication of like how – much i enjoy the cigar yeah but look at how many cigars that landed on our top 10 list last year um yeah, held back it, it, it doesn't it doesn't have know. that big of an effect i don't think it's only man. like a core point maybe it's because we just talked about a few shitty cigars recently yeah all right john 5.40 damn you loomis so i don't i mean we we, we spend a lot of time there smack talking the cigar and i just want to be clear it's not a bad cigar it's just an average cigar and I think when you make your cigar about a particular thing, um, whether that's infused with rosehip leaves or whether that's made on the feet of a Zen master in the Andes, then I think it needs to represent that. And for me, um, you know, and I think, uh, Seth, you kind of hit the nail on the head with the, with the Camacho. The, the infusion was noticeable and prominent. And I think you have to do that, whether you think you're going to alienate your base or not. Um, if you're going to make this big thing in the packaging, you got to do it. And uh, this did not. And as a result, was pretty flat for me. Eric? Yeah, my 5.15 is very ma perfectly matching my experience. Uh, you know, construction was good. I didn't. It wasn't amazing to me. It was very good in both. But uh, the flavor experience was uh, slightly below average. Um, look, man, I, I sound like a broken record every time I review an AJ cigar, but. Um, it's the same stuff. Um, you know, that, I don't know. It does if, seem like a broken record, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't. He used to do some good stuff. I just don't know what. I mean, is he spreading himself too thin? Like, what's going on? I just. I, I mean, but you know, it, I don't know. I'm not sure. Wait, what's the last? Just, what's the last good cigar you had out of him? From him? Last from call? AJ? Yeah, it's, it's a long. It's Bay been a long artist. time. Yeah, I mean it's been a while. I mean maybe Wait, maybe one? the last call or last call, last call Maduro or the Bay of uh, Service. Yeah, yeah, you know I don't know. Was like, like, holy shit, that was like four or five years ago, I think. Uh, I think three, three years. Three, ago. yeah, three, oh. five, three. What was the last good? Three years is a long time. <laughs> last call. Last call. Last call Maduro and the Bay of Service. Jeez. Yep. No. Hey, did you guys go into this cigar with uh, greater expectations than normal? Uh, uh, I would I would say after the whiskey roll less. Honestly, hmm. yeah, because I actually went in with greater expectations than than normally because, you know, I mean, you and I, John, you and I, probably, you know, we, we talk so much about sherry yep. cast for poor and tell, and yep. especially it's not just any sherry cast; it's the king of sherry cast, it's Pedro Jimenez, yep. right? So that got me really amped, but you know, like we all kind of agreed upon, the smoking experience overall was 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 didn't hit exactly all the notes we wanted to, so. I would say, as Aaron said, the number of disappointing cask-influenced cigars I've had so far managed my expectations very effectively, and having the whiskey row before this doubled that, and it still didn't manage to meet my expectations. So, no, yeah. you're going with a clean slate, man. Mm. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, you look at any factory that's producing cigars for people, it, you you start to see this 
I don't know. I think it's a trend. I mean, you start seeing these companies who are making cigars for a lot of people and all these blends are, I mean, let's be real about it. It's, you know, they create like five blends and, you know, someone gets one blend and another person gets another blend and they're all kind of based off of it. And you start to see the deterioration of that company. I mean, you know, EP Carrillo hasn't done anything great for themselves in a long time, but they're supposedly making all this great stuff for all these other companies. It's like, what are you doing? My advice on this one would be whatever amount of time you're leaving tobacco in the barrel, triple it. Agreed. That's what I'd want to know is how much how much it is. And is there not enough tobacco? Should they've also put yeah. some filler tobacco in there? Or maybe yeah, they I mean, need these, to... Because you're just doing the binder from my understanding, right? Oh, yeah. well. That's just the binder. Binder. Oh, is it's that just, what it is? It's oh. just the binder. Oh. They yeah, that's, they not, that's not enough. Yeah. yeah. You need to put the filler in there. Yeah. Speaking from years of manufacturing experience. You got to put the cigar bands in there. <laughs> that's right. No. Put the bands in there, too. Yeah, put, the put everything in there. Put the boxes in there, you know? Yeah. I'm. I think I'm being serious. Like, put the boxes in there. Have the boxes smell like Pedro Jimenez. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Should, put the should, rollers in there too. Cigars in the barrels. Have Pedro Jimenez start making small little barrels that hold ten cigars. And See, do it. Now you're talking. Oh. Now we're going. And you crack those open in an event, and you pull cigars out, and it's got that fresh cherry smell. That's right. Yeah, yeah man. So, oh. we, John, let me ask you this. Let's all right. So let's say let's say you're a manufacturer. And, I mean, you're not a cigar manufacturer, but let's say you get like I mean, I don't clearly know, I am. Let's say you get. I don't know. Five barrels. Okay. Or sherry butts in this case. probably bombarding those barrels with tobacco. Yep. And these are barrels that are already, for lack of a better word, they have been drained of every piece of flavor that they have, right? Because sherry sherry, sherry punchins and sherry butts are like eight times more expensive than a bourbon barrel. And so in the whiskey manufacturing, they have absolutely toasted and drained these puppies. There's nothing left. They're 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 putting out air at this point. Yeah. So you you've already drained them, and you're probably recycling and recycling with them because yeah. it's not like they're buying. It's it, I doubt they're buying these barrels all the time. No. So it's just the, they, there you go. So you, you, I, I guarantee that you're going to see this continuous depreciation if yep. depending on how often they buy the barrels in every other like production. Every time I, the next batch of tobacco goes in, it's just going to go down and down and down. I, I think what they need to start doing is they need to hire a cooper. <clears throat> they need to get a cooper to toast the barrels and get because that's I think what's needed is to revitalize these barrels for the last whatever aging times is to toast them again or spray them down and toast them to get that sherry out of the wood. Um, and then, like I said, the filler tobacco needs to go in there way longer, way longer. Wouldn't like, be an 850 can, cigar yeah. anymore, though. Probably that's the leak. Probably. Well, I mean, we're not we're not there. We're not even remotely there. Like, no. would would you say, June? It's not going to be eight dollar fifty cigar anymore at that point. No, and at which point do you get to the point of what Drew State is? Is is you know, here's a question for you. You can have this now. What if it was slightly infused with, you know, this sherry quality, and it smoked smoke better. It You'd rather smoke it then. Yep. Yeah. Yep. No doubt. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Soak the leaves and sherry. Fuck it. Raise the price to eleven bucks. Yeah. Punch it, it up. It's, yeah, it's but at the same time, it's you're the guys who are gonna smoke it are gonna know when they get it, they're gonna be like, dude, I'm I'm gonna get this quality flavor from it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. uh ask uh Robert to give it a test. Robert. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right. Anything else on this one? Or are we going to wrap it up? No, we've, we were done. Wrap it up. All right. From the to the like, high. like the sherry barrels, we squeezed everything we could That's out of right. it. If you just catch this video on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to us. Also, check out the full written review on the website, developmentpalace.com. Follow us on all the social media channels and catch all of our review, review recaps on podcasts, so iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Thank you for tuning in. We will catch you on the next one. Pedro Menez.